Hello all. Today we will be solving or we will be creating a book recommendation system using K nearest neighbor. And in my previous video, I have already shown you how we can create a book recommendation system using correlation, that is Pearson correlation. But now we basically use an advanced machine learning technique called as K nearest neighbor. Or you can just say nearest neighbor, which is also an unsupervised technique. And we'll try to find out which are the similar movies that can be recommended to the users. As usual, when if you have seen my previous video, the first step is that you download the data set from this particular URL. And then I'm going to take some data sets, uh, the CSV file like book.csv. I'm going to consider this some columns from them. And then I'm going to see the users.csv and finally the book ratings.csv. So I'm basically using Pandas to read all this particular CSV file. So I'm reading the data set with all the necessary features. After reading it, these are some warnings. No need to worry about it, but just consider all the data set that you have. And then here are some rating distribution that I'm trying to check. All these code materials are present in the GitHub link. You just have to download from the description box altogether. And then what you can do is that after downloading, you just go and run this all things. Okay, everything is same like my previous session. If you have already seen, if you have not seen, please go and uh, go ahead and have a look how we are done with the help of how we created this book recommendation system with uh, correlation, uh, uh, Pearson correlation. But all the steps are same till here, till the seventh step, all the steps are same. Uh, where I'm actually reading the data set, I am basically seeing the shape of the ratings data set similarly with uh, I'm seeing the shape of the movies data set also so here it is every information is given over here and then this is basically I'm trying to check out the histogram of the user age and I'm trying to see that how many people or what is the age distribution basically what people have basically seen okay uh, basically people have uh, you know given their ratings now <clears throat> we'll apply some statistic analysis saying that if the users are given, uh, we'll consider only those records or those ratings where the users have basically given more than 200 ratings and the book should not, a book uh, with less than 100 ratings should not be considered because there will be so many books guys which will just be having one rating, two rating, three ratings and very less number of ratings and by that we cannot just consider that that book may be, you know, uh, a very famous and a popular book. So what we do is that I'm trying to put this condition wherein if the users are given more than 200 ratings, I'm going to consider uh, those kind of books along with the bo uh, books ratings which are less than 100. I'm just going to exclude them. Okay. So uh, this condition I'm just applying on my ratings uh, data set by finding my value counts and then putting this condition where my counts is greater than 200. I'm going to take that indexes only. Similarly, in the case of the ratings column, also I'm saying that if it is greater than 100, with respect to a specific user, I'm going to take that particular record only. All you have to do guys, this is very much simple. Just execute it line by line. You'll be able to understand. Now the main techniques arises. Uh, how do we, and in this particular technique, I'm basically going to use collaborative filtering using K nearest neighbor. What I will be focusing on guys, see this. First of all, I have my ratings data set, which I have read it from my data set. I have booked data set, right? I'll try to merge this two based on ISBN, which is my unique use, uh, unique ID of the book. Once I merge it, I have my combined book, uh, book ratings. And from this, I'm specifically taking some of the columns over here. Uh, so this all columns, I don't require it. So I'm, I'm just making it as a list and I'm dropping it over there from here because for collaborative filtering, all I will be requiring is my user ID, ISBN book rating and book title. Uh, you'll just see to it how it is done. So here, when I see the head of my data set after combining, after merging and after dropping the columns, I basically have four things. One is user ID, ISBN, book rating and book title. Now the next thing arises is that what we are trying to do is that I'll try to find out the count of the ratings, you know, the, we'll see, we then group by book titles and create a new column for the total rating count. So for each and every book, how many total ratings? is there we will be calculating that and we'll be creating a new column which is called as total rating count now why i am doing this see why i am doing this is that because uh, from this books also you may have just one or two ratings or for, you know you may have 10 ratings again if you have so many so less number of ratings that cannot be a popular book so i'm just trying to create a threshold value wherein i'll say that if this particular book has a total rating count of more than 50 or 100, then only I'll be considering those rows from this particular data set. 
So once I apply this particular condition and see the total rating count, and this is a simple code wherein I'm just taking my combined book rating, which I had created over here. I'm trying to group by book title and book rating, and I'm trying to see the count. And finally, after seeing the count, I have the total rating counts over here. So this particular total rating counts is like, just you can see over here, you have for some books like uh, The Light in the Storm, you just have two ratings, right? Always have popsicles. This book has just one rating, just imagine. And you can't just have that much information to recommend uh, somewhere. So what we do is that we try to, we'll just create some, uh, you know, we'll create some uh, threshold value wherein we'll be saying that if it is greater than that threshold value, only those records I'll be considering. But before that, what I'll do is that I will try to merge this column or this data set, which is my uh, rating counts, since I need this total rating count. And then I'm going to merge with my this combined book based on ISBN. And that is what I am actually drew, doing in this particular code. Combine underscore book rating dot merge. And here I'm giving my book underscore rating count. Book underscore rating count is basically my data set of this. Uh, my left on uh, on which key I'm actually using it. This is basically book title. Uh, right on will be my book title again. So this is basically which key I'm going to take from my left data frame, which key I'm going to take on my right data frame and how, what kind of join I'm basically using. This is basically a left join. Okay. Once I do it, once I see the head part, you can see like this, I'll be getting my data set. Okay. Now, as I said that my total rating count is here. One condition I'll put is that I'll keep a threshold value saying that if it is greater than that particular threshold value, only those ratings I'll be considering. So what I'll do is that I'll create a variable called as popularity threshold, which will be 50. Okay, that basically means if there are more than 50 ratings, uh, total ratings for that book, then only I'm going to consider. And finally, I'll just say that rating with total rating count, which is my variable, which I created over here. And I'll say that I'll put a query saying that if the total rating count is greater than the popularity threshold, then I'm going to take the head of it. Then here you have the complete data set. Okay, so I, I, I have basically removed all the books, uh, you know, which is not having more than 50 total ratings and um, because I know that till that many books, it may not be popular. Okay. Since we have, again, this threshold value can be changed. You can try out with different, different threshold value. Now, when I uh, did this and when I saw the shape, there were around 62,000 records now. Guys. Now the main problem is that when I was trying to run it uh, or apply a K nearest neighbor, it was really taking much time in my laptop. So what I did is that I just took the users from US, USA and Canada only. Okay. When I took the users from USA and Canada, there were a small number of records. So what we'll do is that we'll just try to create a recommendation for USA and Canada citizens or Canada people who are staying over there. And uh, based on this particular data set, we'll just give the recommendation. Definitely, if you have a powerful laptop, you can definitely apply for the complete thing. So here what I'm doing is that uh, the rating popular book I'm merging with the users because I have to take only users from user and Canada. You remember I have a user data set which I have already read and uh, here you can see uh, this is my user data set right so user data set I have already so I'm just going to apply a small condition saying that I'm going to take uh, I'm going to join uh, left on join with user ID and user ID over here what kind of join uh, when I'm merging this uh, data frame with my users data frame I'm going to take a left join after taking a left join all I do is that I apply this particular condition where I say that Wherever the location string contains US and Canada, just pick up that particular uh, rows. So all the ro rows will be, uh, you know, stored in this particular uh, variable. After that, I drop the age column. I don't require it. Okay. Age, because based on age, we are not providing the recommendation. We're just providing based on US and Canada and based on the ratings that we have provided. And this is my data set, how it will look like. And you can see that location is basically USA. It is given on the right hand. side. Now, the main thing is that uh, if I'm applying, uh, you know, K nearest neighbor, one technique that I'm going to apply is something called as cosine similarity. In cosine similarity, what we do is that each and every movie, each and every movie will be represented in vectors. Suppose I have a movie called as Avengers and Avengers vectors are somewhere like one comma zero and it is pointed over here. Okay. Or it is pointed over here. Let me just remove this. Okay. Suppose it is uh, point. I'll just create it once again. So this is my graph and suppose I consider that Avengers is basically a two vectors. See in cosine similarity, if you don't know guys, I've already explained in my previous video. Uh, each and every movies will be represented in vectors. Okay. And that will be populated in a graph like this okay, internally. 
suppose my Avengers is basically represented as one comma zero. Okay, this is one, and this is zero. So it may be pointing over here. Suppose I want to find other movie which is just like a comedy movie like Minions. Okay, and suppose for this the vector is zero comma one, and I see that you know the distance is so much. So how to how to how do we find out the cosine similarity between this is by using this simple formula? And if I just go and create a line like this, there will be some angle created. Suppose this is forty five degree. In order to find out the relationship between Minion and Avengers, here I can just use cos forty five, and this will be somewhere around the you know point five three. So this basically indicates that there is around fifty three percent of similarity between. Minions and Avengers. Even though Minions is a comedy movie, Avengers have some amount of comedy scenes, you know, but it is not completely. Uh, when you see some scenes of Hulk and all, so uh, this kind of percentage basically indicates that how similar the movies are based on cosine similarity. And this cosine similarity we are going to use with respect to k nearest neighbor because k nearest neighbor will help us to compute the distance. When I want to compute the distance. This kind of distance between this point and this point, I will be able to get the angle if I use cosine as my parameter. Okay, so let's see how to do this. Let's see how to do this practically. So here, what I'm doing is that first of all, whatever matrix this I have, I'm converting this into an array. I have to convert this into an array. So for that, what I'll do is that I'll be taking my user ID. So here you can see that I'm saying that drop duplicates user ID in book title because there may be some uh, duplicates. and then after that i'll create a pivot table based on book title so basically on 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 all my indexes there will be a uh, book titles okay all on on uh, all my indexes there will be book title and in my columns it should have user id and my value should be having ratings okay so let me just uh, execute this for you and uh, let me just show it to you how it will look like for that what i'll do is that i'll just uh, go and execute all these things uh, that is required Uh, just give me a second i'll just execute all these things because uh okay this is executed uh, i have to create the data set for usa and canada i see this uh, as soon as i execute this statement and uh, when i create a new cell now main thing is that i have created a pivot table okay so before creating a pivot table if i go and see this okay and i just write dot head here you can see that what what this pivot table is doing in the indexes i have taken all my book title uh, in all my features i have basically taken my columns uh, so column is basically all my user ids and these are the ratings that are given by this particular user id suppose over here you have 10 this basically indicates that for this particular user id it has given 10 rating for this particular movie oh sorry not movie for a, this particular book okay so this is what i have basically created this is basically my pivot table now after creating this because see the main thing i need is book title user id and book rating based on this i will be trying to you know do a recommendation here i'm basically using collaborative filtering so after this what i do is that i create this in the form of matrix and for that i'll be using skypy uh, in skypy you have something called as csr_matrix which will actually create a sparse matrix sparse matrix basically indicates that most of your uh, values will be zeros and uh, some of the values will be non zeros here you can see an example for that and for that i'm creating a matrix by using skypy.sparse uh, after this what i do is that i implement this k nearest neighbor and for implementing uh, the nearest neighbor all i have to do is that i have to use sklearn.neighbors import nearest neighbor okay so uh, inside this nearest neighbor i'm going to use the metric cosine the algorithm will be brute and then finally i'm going to fit this particular data set that i have actually created for my pivot um so not pivot sorry it will be the matrix part so here it is uh, once i do this it will basically apply all the things remember guys how many neighbors i am going to take by default it will be five neighbors p is equal to 2 indicates that the distance it will be calculated based on euclidean distance please have a look i have already created videos on this also after this what i'll do is that i'll go down i will just select suppose i'll select one movie suppose this particular shape of zero i'm basically selecting an index number and based on that particular index number what i am doing is that i am taking that whole field whole field whole row right whole row and i'm trying to find out give me the nearest six neighbors by using model_knn.k neighbors okay so these are the parameters that you have to supply whenever you want to do this first is that which row you want 
the complete data set and how many neighbors, how many movies you, recommendation you want. So six I've written. So here you can see that once I execute it, right? So I've got 655th row. So 653th row uh, information is given as the first parameter. All this information, the records, uh, all the information. Uh, how many neighbors, how many movies I want to get the recommendation. So I've written it as six. So uh, let me just go and see that this 655 is which movie? So the movie is something called as The Summer House. And for this recommendation, I have just written a small code because this, this uh, K nearest neighbors will give us two uh, parameters as a response. One is the distance value that basically indicates that how far the other recommended movies are from this current movie that is The Summer House. And indices that basically indicates that which movie is basically recommended, which indexed movie is basically recommended. You can convert that and once you execute it, you can see that recommendation for the summer house is basically you have five movies that has given, you know, and there is also a distance parameter over here. See that 73%, 73%, 0.73, 0 0.74. And always remember that as the distance increases, you know, as the distance increases, that basically means that it is less recommended. Okay. So in this case, the highest recommended is this Miss Julia's Picks of Mind. This is a novel. And uh, this is basically the distance is 0.73. Okay? It is not in percentage, sorry. It is in 0 0.3, 0 0.73. That basically means that that much far it is from the summer house and this is the most nearest recommended movie. So this was with respect to K nearest neighbors, guys. The most important thing is that how do you implement this cosine similarity? This cosine similarity is basically given as a functionality in your KNN. So here it is, in, it is given in your KNN. You can see that my first parameter metric is basically given as cosine. So this was about how you can create a book recommendation system using K nearest neighbor. I hope you like this particular videos guys. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you have not already subscribed, I'll see you all in the next video. I hope uh, you are learning a lot from my videos, from my contents. Please like the videos. Please share with all your friends, uh, whoever requires this kind of help. And make sure you press the bell icon uh, because whenever I upload any videos, you'll get the notification. So thank you one and all. I'll see you all in the next video.